Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I am Patrick Macias and I'm here to welcome you to the brand new episode of Otakuverse Zero. Oh yeah, and uh, today you might notice that I'm by myself. My lovely co-host Yuasakawa is in Tokyo, and right now I'm in Osaka. That's right, we've undertaken a secret mission here at OVZ to go to the Kansai district, uh, the quarter of Japan, which is down on the southwest side. And uh, yeah, uh, fun facts about Osaka, third largest city in Japan by population, uh, also known as the Kitchen of Japan, uh, as part of a legacy of food that goes all the way back to importing rice and flour and good stuff like that. So I think the main mission here will be to try to eat a lot of local cuisine and uh, get fat and uh, gain some weight and go back to Tokyo in style. So let's check it out, Osaka, oh yeah. So now we find ourselves in Denden Den Town, which I think is fair to say is Osaka's answer to Akihabara. I just look around and I'm seeing uh, maids, I'm seeing game centers, I'm seeing moe figures, and I'm seeing a lot of otaku. That shouldn't be surprising because uh, we're on a street called Ota Road, Otaku Road here in Denden Den Town. And a lot of the stores may be familiar to those of you who've actually made the journey to Akihabara. Uh, I've seen a store called Super Potato. There's a yellow submarine over there. Um, Kospa cosplay store and uh, all your favorites here I have to say the prices appear to be a little bit cheaper in Osaka and uh, popularity ranking wise I would say number one is One Piece a lot of people shopping for One Piece figures today number two would be Monster Hunter and everything else just seems to kind of fall beneath uh, those all-powerful entertainment properties right now so I'm gonna check out Den Den Ten I'm gonna run around and see what I can find Okay, looks like night is falling here in Osaka. Uh, we're in the Shinsekai district, very famous for its food, folks, and fun. And behind me is the Tsutenkaku Tower, very famous landmark here in Osaka. Uh, constructed in 1912, I believe, and then rebuilt after a little bit of destruction there in 1943. Uh, you can see the observation decks are all lit up, all nice and green, and uh, I have to tell you, I'm getting a little hungry. I think it's time for some kushiage, the local cuisine. Okay, I wasn't kidding about the kushiage. Uh, we've actually uh, gotten inside a restaurant here uh, in Osaka, and um, I'm staring at a plate here of delicious kushiage, deep fried foods. Uh, looks like we've got some potatoes, we've got some chicken parts, uh, okra, all my favorites. Uh, high calorie, deep fried. Where should I start? This looks kind of imposing. Wait, that's a potato. I think I want the, the negi. Here we go. It's like a deep fried green onion. Is there some sauce or something like that I'm missing? Oh, there we go. Oh yeah. I'm a stranger in this country. So, can I do, how do we do? Oh yeah. I'm being advised off camera that I'm doing a social faux pas. So I'm just gonna drink a little bit more. Okay, we're inside a restaurant in the Dotenbori area, eating okonomiyaki. Isn't that gorgeous? Take a look at that. Okay, now some of you unlucky people may not have heard of okonomiyaki before. Um, difficult to describe. I think a lot of people compare it to like a, a pancake. You mix up the batter with uh, usually some cabbage, some meat, 
uh, some mojito here, pour a bunch of mayonnaise on it, some okonomiyaki sauce, and uh, it's fabulous. I'm just going to dig in. It's one of the local specialties here in Osaka, and uh, I'm not going to hold back one bit. I'm going to really let this one have it. <laughs> It's excellent. It's really, really good. Okay. And now, the hand of fate has just handed me takoyaki octopus balls. Okay, well, grilled octopus balls. Um, containing battered balls inside, containing a piece of an octopus, uh, which I'm not very keen on eating. I think when I was a kid, when I saw 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, ever since then, I've always kind of rooted for... Uh, the Creatures of the Deep. Not a real big fan of octopus, but we have uh, got some plum sauce on there, some shishito leaf, so this actually should be about as close to edible as I personally find this sort of thing. So here we go. This is this is to you. Tonight's kind of special. All right. Very chewy. Um, it's good. No, the flavor's good. I don't really understand why it has to be octopus, but I guess, you know, why not? Um, in any event, oh, my goodness, the, uh, the hand of fate is just handing me your viewer mail. So I must stop eating for a moment here and answer your pulse-pounding questions from around the world for our humble yet wild shaky web show. Okay, this first email is from Batter. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank you for bringing this show out as often as you guys do, which is once every two weeks. I hope you do continue this for as long as possible. Batter, quite frankly, so do I. My question is, how is this fandom craze of anime and manga culture perceived by the older generation of Japan, uh, i.e. parents? Uh, interesting question. I think actually the people who discriminate the most against otaku in Japan are uh, people of the older generation, people who did not grow up reading uh, manga, watching anime. I think they, they tend to be the most skeptical, saying that stuff is for kids, why don't you grow up, why don't you move out of my house, why don't you get a real job, etc., etc. So, um, they don't like it. I don't think they like it as much as the young people do here in Japan. So that answers your question better. Uh, just, just, tell them to, just tell them to go back inside and be quiet. You know, just don't listen to them. They're old. They're in the way. Okay, uh, letter number two is from Matthew. He says, I really enjoy the show, and I must say I'm a little jealous of you being able to meet Carrie Pamu Pamu. Matthew, even though it happened to me, I don't believe it happened uh, personally, and I'm jealous of myself. But yeah, that was pretty crazy. Um, my question is this. I speak English as a first language, but want to learn to speak and read write Japanese. Where would you suggest starting? Okay. Now, our director, in all honesty, told me quite frankly that uh, the best way to do it is by getting a Japanese girlfriend, which is sometimes easier uh, to say than it is actually to do. You can get a t-shirt that says, I want a Japanese girlfriend, and walk around you know, your local shopping mall and see you know, what kind of reaction that gets you. Yeah, girlfriends and wives, they're good for a few words here, and they're mostly like, you know, clean up or uh, get out or uh, shut up, that sort of thing. Um, another good way is to learn a song, maybe your favorite anime theme, you can really uh, concentrate on just a short amount of words and really try to focus on the meaning and intonation. And the third thing that works for me is, this is not a commercial, there's a series of books called Minna no Nihongo. Everybody's Japanese, but look for it, Minna no Nihongo. Uh, those are the books that I've kind of learned whatever crummy Japanese I have using those. This is not really an endorsement, but um, they don't really use any English in those books. Everything's hiragana or katakana or basic kanji. So I think it's important if you're going to learn Japanese, don't use any English. Just make a complete break for it. So yeah, thanks for your viewer mail. And I'm going to continue eating and drinking here and getting uh, buck wild in Dotobori and Osaka. <laughs> Now we have arrived at one of the most iconic tourist destinations in all of Osaka, the Dotenbori area. Behind me is one of the most iconic sites in the Kansai district. Uh, you have all these neon signs advertising all these crazy things, including the super iconic symbol maybe of Osaka itself, the Galico Man, dating back from 1935, a candy company character crossing the finish line in high style. To my right, 
Nampa bashi. Okay, Nampa, one of my favorite Japanese words, which means picking up chicks or picking up guys. That would be Gyaku Nampa, but uh, this bridge is a notorious pickup spot. And right now it's Saturday night, everyone's just kind of wandering around Dotenbori looking for food to eat, looking for trouble, looking for booze to drink. And uh, I'll be joining them shortly, but in the meantime, I wanted to thank you so much for watching our show. Thank you for supporting it. Uh, that is the end of our episode for today, but continue to support our adventures. Tell your friends about our show. Check us out at the Facebook address below. Uh, check us out on Twitter using hashtag O-V-Z-E-R-O. -E and please email us your questions, complaints, your poetry, your unsolicited manuscripts to O-V-Z at kstation.com. Okay, thank you. I finally got that right. Thank you so much. The spirit of Yu Asakawa is smiling upon me from someplace in Tokyo. So that is it for this episode. Thanks so much for watching OBZ. And uh, we'll see you next time, probably back in Tokyo.